miles away. But that maybe startled him so much that he goes into a major uh, meltdown. You don't even hear it. Or it could be a smell that you don't smell. And he, it's offensive to him. Or some type of light that's flickering or flashing or just the color of it just sends him to oblivion. You've experienced some of that. I see. You can see. I see that in you. Um, so what the sensory learning program does is by the combination of the energy from the light, we talk about the red and the violet lights, and different programming, we'll talk about it a little bit more uh, during the session, and the sound, we'll talk about that a little bit more, and, and the vestibular, uh, we're able to like glue these systems back together like the way they should be. So they're all, so it's like this, so nothing's going to break them down after we get them. And that's, you know, when you learn how to ride a bike, what's different from before you learn how to ride a bike and after you learn how to ride a bike? You look the same. What's different? What's different is you have new electrical chemical pathways from the brain to the different parts of the body that are responsible for dry, riding a bike successfully and automatically. What happens first, though, when you first get on the bike and your mom or dad are trying to help you, and your brother's there trying to knock you over? What happens is you get this little wisp of a, like a thread of electrical chemical energy connecting the brain to those different parts of the body. It's like so, a thread that could float away. But then you try it again, and you got 20 of those threads, and you got 200, and then 2 million of those threads. And eventually, if they were like telephone wires, or electrical wires, they would not even fit in this room. There's so many of them. But in the human brain, which is like about this big, it's all electrical chemical. It doesn't take up any space to add more connections. And once they're there, they're there forever. Have you ever forgotten how to ride a bike, anyone? Or drive a car? Or type? These are all, everything we do as human beings involves creating new electrical chemical pathways. And unless we have a head injury later in life, or a dementing disease, uh, we, we maintain those pathways. The visual, auditory, and vestibular systems, as I said, need to work together. When there's a weakness or a breakdown between the sensory systems, developmental delays are often present. Looking in more detail at the connections between vestibular and visual and auditory systems, we'll look first at the relationship between the visual and the vestibular systems. How well the visual and vestibular systems work together affect our ability to catch a ball, to ride a bike, our handwriting, our eye tracking, and teaming. How well our auditory and vestibular systems work together affects our sense of rhythm, our ability to sense the direction of sound, how it feels to say k or b. Our ability to effectively sequence sounds necessarily for, for formulating speech. And our visual and auditory relationships affects how we relate letters to sounds. Our reading comprehension. Our ability to picture word meanings. For instance, when I think of or say the word cow, I can see or picture a cow in my mind. And our ability for complex understanding. When you see how interdependent and interrelated the sensory systems are, you can see how sensory breakdowns are at the root of many, many dysfunctions or disorders. Conversely, when we strengthen 
the sensory connections, we often see benefits across a wide spectrum of diagnoses or labels. The sensory learning program is working on the sensory level, helping to strengthen essential sensory connections. Currently, we are one of uh, 31 certified sensory learning program providers in the nation. There's three of us now in Ohio, one in Cincinnati, one in Columbus, one here. Um, there's also one in Milan, Italy, one in uh, Mexico City, and one in uh, Sydney, Australia. Um, we're proud to be one of these very special centers. Here's what a couple of uh, providers, uh, the one is an occupational therapist from outside Atlanta, and the next is a speech pathologist from Louisiana, have to say about the program. They have the systems in their offices. Speaking as a as an OT, this is Tara Mulvaney from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, I am very impressed with how the sensory, this is important, the sensory learning program is helping the motor development of the children in my practice. After working with a couple of three-year-olds for almost a year, I saw prim residual primitive reflexes, which should have been gone between 7 and 12 months of age, disappear by the end of the 12 session days. So that's dramatic. Then this is Robbie Whitaker in Leesville, Louisiana. As a speech and language pathologist, I find the sensory learning program an incredibly valuable resource. We find our clients that have gone through the program to be much more responsive to therapy. They attend better, and their ability to learn is improved. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes now sharing a little about the sensory learning program with you. Here, we see the the computerized motion table, the computerized light instrument, and here you see the, the uh, headphones. During the session, the table slowly rises and falls and rises and falls, as shown providing vestibular stimulation for the participant. As this is happening, the light instrument, computer design, is gently cycling from dim to bright, to dim to bright, at pre-programmed levels, while the participant is listening at the same time to the, to the uh, proprietary sensory learning auditory program through headphones. All this happens, by the way, and you can't see it here, and, and that's why I never got it for years of I saw this uh, at different meetings. It was always in a huge context of a, a meeting, and it was, all the lights were on, so I never understood what was going on. This is done in complete darkness. The only thing the participant sees is the light above their head, okay? which appears to move this way and this way one day when the table is rotating like this, and it appears to move this way and this way when the table is moving like this. because. You ever been at a stoplight and, and the car next to you moves and you, and you think you're going backwards, so you put your foot on the brake? That's the sort of a thing you get when you're on the table. And even though you know physically the table is moving, it seems like the light is moving. Okay? All this happens, like I say, in a completely darkened room, which is necessary to achieve optimal benefits from the light so we get the full energy from the light, and to further challenge the three sensory systems to work together to better integrate multi-sensory input. Preceding the intervention, we do a pre-programmed visual field. Have you ever had visual fields done? Checks, you know, typically 
to see if there's any problems with glaucoma. But what we find, we, and do we do a special type of visual field called a color visual field, where we not only see the extent of the, of the field to the side by bringing white objects in until they can recognize them, and some kids can't because they're too young, but if the child is able to do this, we, we try it with everybody. We also bring colored targets in, red, blue, and green, to see how large their ability is to detect these objects. Normally, when someone brings their fingers in from the side, you can see them way out to the side here, okay? Try that a little bit, see? But with a lot of the children with sensory issues, their, their visual field is constricted. And the colors is constricted to like almost the size of a quarter or a nickel. That's all that they can recognize is happening in front of them is right in this little small area. It's like looking through a, if you would take a paper towel holder and look through it, that's sort of like what their functional vision is like. And that's why a lot of children with sensory issues, if you can imagine this, picture yourself looking through this paper towel holder, there could be someone standing here in front of them you and I would recognize that someone is there. But if that person moves just one inch farther, suddenly, without my permission, there's this person that wasn't there a second ago, and now he's there. And it's very frightening. Does that make sense? So what, <laughs> so it's like, and, and you wonder why the kids are looking, you know, they're moving around all the time trying to, to you know, just calm down, sit down. It's because if you tried to look at your environment through a tube all the time, you'd find that, that it's hard to really know what's happening around you without this constant scanning to prevent danger. To, so you're, you're aware of it. Does that help? Okay. So what we do before the presentation is a, pre, is a pre-programmed visual field which... Um, which shows, this, are, this shows the a normal visual field, and this shows what a child with sensory issues often is restricted to in their vision. So a constricted field shows that there's less than optimal amount of light energy traveling along the optic nerve. An expansion of the visual field, if we can make it bigger, which we usually see in 12 to 30 days, can affect memory, speed of processing, and the overall ability to learn. On the left is an initial visual field here of a 13-year-old with learning problems. The visual field on the right shows the expansion after 12 session days. This boy began to be more mature socially, interacting with the kids in his carpool, they're no longer a danger to him, having a sense of humor, he's more relaxed, and wanting to do more physical things like working out with his mother at the gym. With many children who have developmental delays, their artwork is very premature. This six-year-old's art, after three months, shows significant changes in visual, spatial perception. I want to know how many in the room can draw a horse like this on the right. The before and after horse drawings are the work of an 11-year-old boy with Asperger's. This boy was fluent, very fluent verbally, but strengthening the visual vestibular connection resulted in a talented artist. A six-year-old first grader <laughs> with non, diagnosed with nonverbal language disorder, NVLD, was having a lot of trouble making progress with his handwriting. Over Christmas vacation, he went through the sensory learning program. By the time he started second grade, probably about nine months later, he had age-appropriate skills. That's still a little better than my handwriting. 
I never said that before, did I? Sorry. Essentially, this is a mother talking about her six-year-old son. Essentially, the program appears to have helped my six-year-old son connect his head to his body. He's running for the sake of running. He's drawing bodies instead of just heads. And after a year of fruitless effort, Alex just rode his bike for the first time the other day. That was a six-year-old. High degree of parent satisfaction. In a sample population of 115 parents whose children have completed the sensory learning program, 106 felt positive changes occurred. Nine felt minimal or no change occurred, according to this questionnaire answers. Or 92% felt the program was helpful, and 8% felt minimal to no changes occurred. So when when the light, sound, and motion, the energy from these three components working together creates new electrical chemical pathways. We don't know how many pathways initially were, were, were not developed or were injured or irritated, so we don't know exactly how much is going to happen. We can't predict and tell you, yes, your son will be talking by this time, or uh, he will be, his handwriting is going to be per, he'll, pure, perfect, he'll be drawing horses like this, etc. We can't say that because we don't know what's going on. In our, in our cognitive program, our vision improvement program, we have over 500 letters from parents saying that this has been a success. So 100% of our parents through the patients through the cognitive program have been successful because we can monitor each, each session and we can gradually increase the, the complexity of the tasks that they're going to achieve and they achieve it cognitively so we can make sure over 10 to 12 weeks that they're going to always have good success. Here, we can't do that. It's a non-cognitive issue. But 92% is much better than anything else out there. You see my tie. I don't know if you see my tie, but it's got the puzzle pieces on it, which is the, the symbol for autism. Um, not, there's not just one cure for autism. That's why there's so many pieces of the puzzle. But we, I kind of feel that this is so effective that it's like the four corners of the puzzle. You get the four corners and a little bit of the sides put in, then it's a lot easier for the other interventions, speech therapy, occupational vision, etc., to do what they can do. Tutoring, etc. I'm going to have Margie come up and talk about our very first patient, August um, 9, 2008, and what happened. It's just pretty, pretty exciting for me. I'll try not to cry. Right now I'm going to talk about Joseph. Uh, I usually don't let Dr. Schmickel, um talk about him because he gets very emotional. This is the reason, or Joseph is the reason, why we have the sensory learning program here in Toledo. Um, Joseph is a boy that Dr. Schmickel would see daily at uh, morning mass. And he would come with his family, and he had several other brothers and sisters. And Dr. Schmickel would see that the mother had a very hard time controlling him. He would get up, he would shout out, um, she would have to take him to the back of the church every day um, because he just couldn't handle sitting in church for any length of time. So Dr. Schmiegel knew that the program, we already had that vision improvement program, which is very cognitive based, wouldn't be any help to him because he wouldn't just be able to handle it. So when he had found out about sensory learning, he knew that Joseph would be the person that he would want to put through the program first. And we did in September of 2008. Um, Joseph came to us and he had a lot of different issues. He was diagnosed with autism and he um, had lots of meltdowns every day. He probably had about eight to 10 meltdowns every day, lasting anywhere between uh, 20 and 45 minutes where mom could do nothing to console him, to make it any better for him. He also had very limited speech. He probably had maybe two, three word sentences at the most. Um, he was not potty trained at night, so mom was getting up with him every single night, changing sheets um, and doing all those uh, enjoyable things that we love to do in the middle of the night. So um, Joseph went through, like I said, in 2008 and has had amazing, amazing success. Um, the very first uh, week that he was with us, uh, he started noticing things around him that he had never noticed before. Um, he said to his mom, mommy, it's raining. 
and he had never ever noticed anything going on around him, let alone the weather. Um, Mom also said that he was very fascinated with the zipper on his coat. Um, he just was playing with it all the time, and she said he had never even noticed anything like that before. So that was just within the first week. And then after he um, went through at about the 90-day point, um, he was speaking much more than he was before. He was having four and five word sentences. He was now dry at night. Uh, he no longer had to get up with mom and have the sheets changed every single night. And he just had a greater awareness about him. And he was also, she was able to discipline him now. He understood what it was when she would say, Joseph, if you do this, you're not going to be able to get this. So the discipline process with him became much easier. And he had very few meltdowns. Um, he would still have some, but not as many as he would before. And they would last um, very uh, insignificant amount of time, um, you know, five to 10 minutes compared to 45 to 50 minutes at some point. So. Normally we have, and I do have a, our parent advocate here tonight um, who does speak about her child. We'd love to have Joseph's mom come and speak with us, but she's very shy. Um, and actually I think she's due to have a baby here soon um, in the next month or so. Um, but she's very shy and soft-spoken and um, this isn't something that she would be comfortable with. But we did get her to do a commercial for us um, a couple years ago when we first started. And so I'm gonna show you that commercial so you can hear her story and what she has to say about it. For more than a decade, the Sensory Learning Program has been helping children with sensory issues, including autism, to live more normal lives. It's brought healing to my son and to the whole family. Under the direction of Dr. Jeffrey Schmeichel, the Sensory Learning Program is a 30-day drug-free intervention for children with sensory issues as seen in autism. Go to sensorylearning-toledo.com for a free and confidential assessment online. Dr. Schmeichel and the Sensory Learning Program has given us a lot of hope and has given me my family back. Right now I'd like to present our parent advocate, Carrie Porter. Um, this is her adorable son, Caleb, and she's going to tell you about her experience uh, with the Sensory Le Learning Program and how it's affected Caleb. I would first like to um, describe what a child might feel like or what a child might experience um, when they're having these sensory meltdowns or any child or adult that has sensory issues. So if you could all for a moment just close your eyes and um, Imagine what it would be like if you could see obstacles in your way, but you could not make your body move the direction you wanted it to to avoid them. Imagine what it felt, what it would feel like if you felt like someone had given you a shot of Novocaine in your backside, so you couldn't feel if you were sitting in the middle of your chair and you fell off three times during the seminar. Imagine what it would feel like if your clothes felt like they were made of fiberglass. Imagine if every time you tried to write with a pencil, it broke because you pushed too hard. Imagine if the humming of the lights sounded louder than my voice. Imagine if you couldn't focus on me because your eyes went every, went every other way and your everything, I'm sorry. <laughs> Imagine if you couldn't focus your eyes on me because everything and everyone in the room catches your attention and your eyes just go there instead. Imagine if every time someone touches you, it felt like they were rubbing sandpaper on your skin. Imagine if you could not sit here, if you could only sit here for 15 minutes and then you had to take a run around the building or do 20 jumping jacks so you could sit here for another 10 minutes before your muscles felt like they were going to jump out of their skin. Imagine if people's whispers sounded like they were yelling. Imagine if the tag of tagging the back of your shirt makes you feel as uncomfortable as you would if a spider was crawling on you and you couldn't get him off. Imagine if you wanted to write something down but it took at least five seconds to form each letter. You can see the letter in your head, but your hand will not go in the direction you want it to, to write it. Um, Caleb, I, kn I first realized that um, something was going on with Caleb at the age of six months old when I took him to um, his six month uh, checkup and the doctor went to give him a tongue suppressor and Caleb wouldn't reach out and take it. And at first the doctor dismissed it and then it just, I kind of started, the wheels started turning. I'm like, you know what? He doesn't move his arms a lot. And so I brought it to the doctor's attention and I said, you know, 